That's crooked. Whoops. Okay. Okay. I think we're good to go. <laughs> well, hey guys, Natalie here and welcome back to Hey, It's a Good Life and welcome to my kitchen table where we are going to be spending a lot of time together this year as we launch this new series that's all about featuring people in the community who are doing good. Today's video features Stephen Cornett of Nature is Always Right. Stephen is a regenerative, small scale farmer who's had a really successful market garden over the last three years. He's sold at local farmers markets and has his own YouTube channel as well where he shares his knowledge with you. He's on a mission to equip as many people as possible to get started with their farm, even if it's in their backyard. Steven is a wealth of knowledge and we covered so many topics. Please consider this video a 30,000 foot overview of small scale regenerative farming and how you can get started growing big in a small space. I will of course provide as many info cards right here as I possibly can, linking topics covered in this video to videos on Steven's channel where he goes more in depth. So in this video, we'll get to know Steven a little bit about how he got into farming, his beliefs about farming, why his name is Nature is Always Right, how he set up his farm on a small scale to be really successful, and what he and his wife are up to next. So without further ado, let's get into the video. So what did seven-year-old Steven dream of being? <laughs> Man, oh, so when I was seven years old, uh, probably a video game designer or something like that, I think. My first job was working at a golf course when I was 15, and I had to do weed whacking and mowing lawn, and I hated it. And like, I promised myself, I'm never working outside, ever. <laughs> I'm gonna go to college and then get a desk job. You know, that's what I thought in my head. And then I got older, and I you know, got some more wisdom, and I learned more about reality and the world and all this stuff. And, and I realized, um, wow, food's pretty cool. Today, I'm with my friend, Stephen Cornett. Hey, what's up, everybody? Nature's always right. And we're here at his property before he leaves to Tennessee. And uh, we're doing some cleanup today. And I thought I would come out and share with you guys about how you can get started in a small space with regenerative farming. So <laughs> we're in Lemon Grove, San Diego. As you can see, we're in a backyard, so I, do all of this in uh, my backyard, plus so over time I got other plots. So my next door neighbor's yard, I moved into his yard, and then I rented um, or leased another plot down the road. And tell us what your lease terms are. You pay them yeah. in? I pay them in vegetables. So I found people that wanted their yards to be improved or turned into gardens, and in exchange, give them vegetables. So it's like, <laughs> it's the best lease ever. <laughs> yeah, that's a really nice lease. I like yeah. those terms. How much space did you have when you first started farming? Yeah, okay, so, well, when I first started farming, this is like eight years ago, in another part of San Diego, and me and my best friend, Jared Smith, started a farm called Jared's Real Food. That started just with like 24, uh, eight by four foot raised beds. Now fast forward to here, three years ago, or a little over three years ago is when I started this. The first part of the plot was this square right here. And initially that's all the landlords al allowed me to do. They didn't, but over time as they saw it be more successful and they liked it more and things like that, they allowed me to build a few more beds over here for like a home gardener or like if someone in their apartment. Got a bunch of really nice soil, these grow bags, and the system works awesome. It's a cool system if you want to have another area. I can move these too, which is kind of neat. At different times of the year, you're gonna get better sun in different areas, mm -hmm. so you can move it there. Yep. Um, so that's something I like about the grow bags. And now what I'm doing, because I'm leaving, I'm just, I'm selling these. So I'm gonna get a bunch of my money in, like the investment money, I'll get it back when I sell it. I paid off my investment in one season and made like uh, twice what I put into it. So it was very effective for a short little season. Kind of one of the things I wanted to prove was possible in a backyard was to show you could create all your own nutrients on site, or at least most of the nutrients that you needed for your farm on site. Um, and I wanted to show that you could start farming in a backyard on a really small scale, be successful at that, and then go to the next level at a larger scale. So that's kind of the whole reason behind this backyard and this YouTube channel that I make um, all about doing this stuff um, as well. The chicken coop's a big deal for me. That's how I make all of my compost. 20 chickens in there, dropping a lot of manure. I can make really good compost, uh, bedding and everything. Compost number one. So the chicken coop is a deep litter system 
which means I'm putting in layers of carbon in here. Uh, vegetative material like straw, leaves, cardboard, um, things like that. Floor is like, is alive. It's always making compost. So what I do is I rake it all out of here and I, I take it out here and then I mix it with um, a bed of vegetables that's done. And for I, more greens? For more greens to make the ratio correct. and. Cool. And make it, yeah. So this is what you describe as the engine of your farm. Yes, definitely. This works. I was able to run my market garden for three years, basically just off this, this compost um, and not much else. But from a business standpoint, it's cheaper to buy in the compost than to use my labor. Mm. If you want to do this as a business, then I recommend buying it. <laughs> but it's still great to have a system like this to process all of your leftover waste. They're making compost for me for free with no work. What would you tell Steven eight years ago, Steven? Okay, I gotta go in. <laughs> work smarter and not harder. A lot of things like that were hard on my back, like just bending over and lifting things like that, or you know. So now that I'm older, I do a lot more things ergonomically, and or um, if I'm gonna do a task, I try to think, well, what's the least physical effort I could do to, to get it done? I guess I tell my younger self to think about your future body and take care of it. Excuse the disaster over here, but this, so this is my worm system. It's essentially designed on a, the three-toe system. I like the system just because I can just pick it up and move it really easily. Mm -hmm. You got your top tote here. This is where your freshest bedding will be. Most of your worms will be also. A tote underneath. This is typically where your castings will be. Any juice or like the leachate that comes out fall into the third tote. And on my system, this whole bottom shelf here is the third tote. I did this to save money because I would have had to buy a third tote for each one of these. It's modular. I can add more totes to it. I can take this out and carry it to where I want to fertilize. So it's been a really great system for me. Why nature is always right. Sure, it came from the idea that this is a, nature's a already a perfect design, as perfect as it could be on this imperfect planet. It's the idea that nature itself is gonna provide the best solutions uh, for growing food, for health, for whatever issues that we really have on this on this planet. It's already, the solutions are already here for us to, to take and use. But unfortunately, especially in Western society, we've gone down this road of thinking that we are God and that we are more than God, we can create on top of God, so we've done things like GMO crops and other synth you know, synthetically derived pharmaceuticals. You know, all of this is just mimicry. Fentanyl or OxyContin, this is a, a synthetic derivative of opium, which comes from a plant. So nothing is new. The airplane, we mimic the bird. Like we didn't come up with any of this stuff. We, we, saw, it, we saw it in creation we mimicked it and then we use it or we improve it. Um, but we haven't really created anything. Um, so I guess it just goes back to the idea that nature and natural systems will always be the best way to grow food. So trying to find, kind of strike the balance between, because agriculture isn't a natural process, right? So trying to make agriculture as natural as, as we possibly can. What kind of health struggles did you encounter that led you into farming? My big one, the big health problem that I had was self-inflicted mm. because of listening to medical advice and I was, I was desperate for a cure. So I had really bad acne when I was in high school, um, some cystic acne and you know the, the real nasty bad kinds so, yeah, under my, on my back and so as with a lot of teenagers it's a horrible experience and you hate it, you hate how you look and so I wanted to fix it like now. But I was on an antibiotic for like four or five months because the theory is that you're killing all the germs that live inside the pores so they can't get inflamed and then the pus develops and all that. But if you guys know, it <laughs> obliterates your um, gut bacteria and on your whole body. Mm. Massively damaging to the digestive system. Then later I did Accutane, which limits vitamin A production in your body and, and the lubrication of your body. Anyways, what resulted from this was like uh, digestive problems. I, you know, I eventually had to go see a doctor even and to figure out what the heck's going on. And But ultimately, I, 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 the doctor didn't help me. I solved it myself. I had to fix it myself because then I, I finally figured it out what was going on and, and why I was having the problems I was having and then changed my diet. Boom. Fixed. Never had a problem again. Back behind here, you're seeing uh, 18 different grow beds here. They're all about 40 foot long, they're 30 inches wide, 
and this is the standard market garden, like small scale farm size. And a lot of people like it just because you can stand over it, you can step over the rows really easy. They're easy to work and stuff. I have very small pathways though, as you can see, because I've got to fit as much grow room in here as possible. Because like I said, I'm on a, in a backyard. Um, this back square right here is about 5,000 square feet. It's like an eighth of an acre back here. So it's not very big. And I focus on lots of crops that are, are the most profitable. So things that grow quickly, turn over within 60 days, typically, um, or I can harvest them for a very long window of time, like chard or kale or tomatoes, cucumbers. Salad, salad mix is like my, my go-to thing. I, I make the most money on salad mix, heads of lettuce, and microgreens. I really focus on those, and I have a whole method for growing salad mixes and washing and packing them, and um, it's kind of a whole thing because there's a lot of labor involved, but we cut out some of that labor by some of these awesome DIY um, inventions that, that the small farmers have come up with, like the, the salad spinner made from a washing machine or a greens bubbler made from just pipe at a jacuzzi pump. Um, so, you know, this is kind of half taken apart right now, but this is my post-harvest station. It's Most of it's set up to clean salad greens and microgreens. What this used to be was a greens bubbler. It basically blows air through this jacuzzi pump. It blows it through these tubes and creates a ton of bubbles. Basically just mixing all of the, the greens, pulling the dirt and bugs off. And from there, it goes to the spinner. The electricity's off, otherwise I would show you, but it, it just spins this basket. You know, just like your salad spinner at your house. It gets off most of the water. And then it comes to the drying table. So it's got fans on it to blow air over the top. And yeah, and then after this, I would bag the greens. Curtis Stone, for sure. Curtis Stone, the Urban Farmer on YouTube. And he's also got a fantastic farming book I recommend for everybody called The Urban Farmer. So he's the one who really kind of dialed in these super small scale techniques. His stuff was all in urban lots and that's what was different about it. So he's the one who helped me to really conceptualize how to think of the profitability of a crop, how to analyze a crop's performance and then, and then decide, well, maybe I should select something else um, that would make a little bit more money because on a small scale like this, every little bit counts. All efficiencies really matter too. So he helped me like really put all these ideas together with what I already knew about how to raise plants uh, regeneratively. <laughs> so how would you describe your style of farming? Because I know you take mm -hmm. from a lot of different methodologies. Yeah, I, so for me, it's I guess I call myself a natural farmer, holistic farmer, regenerative farmer. I don't know what the right term would be, <laughs> I guess, but I just like, uh, I use any method that is natural. It's made from nature. I either sell by making compost, compost teas. Um, I do worm castings, um, things that are made within nature, like uh, even using plants such as cover crops, um, using the plants themselves to put nutrients down into the soil, no till. So we're never or very rarely tilling the ground or you know, turning the subsoils and mixing those subsoils together. It also chops up, um, microbes, fungal strands, the communication network, um, all the different billions and billions of organisms that exist under the soil. They're being disturbed, their home's being messed up, and those microbes are responsible for the breakdown of nutrients in the soil, which then gets transmitted to the plants through communication. The plants actually ask for specific nutrients and they give out uh, carbohydrates to the microbes. So the microbes get food, and the plants get food, and there's this constant exchange going on. The Korean natural farming now, making your own nutrients kind of to the extreme where you can, you can create every input that you would ever need for your farm. So uh, I'm kind of constantly experimenting with all these different methods from around the world to see what works on this context as, a, as growing for money, or also for growing just for your home scale what makes sense for everybody and I just want to really awaken people's minds to God's design of, of nature and plants and all, and all of this, how they communicate with the soil, give them a deeper understanding that will allow them to garden without any chemicals, with nothing, just using um, the design of nature. How has farming grown you as a person? Oh, um, I can't even begin to yeah, to tell you how much it's helped me grow. It helped me realize everything, the truth about this world, this reality, that God is actually real, 
it helped me understand that there is a design and a designer to all of this. I studied like biology, soil biology, and plants. The, the more you dive down deeper and deeper and deeper, it just gets more complex. And I just had to admit that, how is this not a design? It's, it's obviously a design. The way it all works together too, the way the soil, the plants, the birds, the animals, the everything, it's an obvious system. Um, and systems are designed. I guess that was a big way that it changed me and just uh, the amount of lessons that are out in the garden or the farm, it, like the whole lesson of life is out there mm. for you to go find if you're paying attention enough. But ultimately I think it spiritually just strengthened my belief in God and that it's, it is real. I can't deny that creation. We have no reason to deny God because you can't deny that this is a creation. And just finding out the truth that wow, the food that you grow in your backyard, that is your medicine. That is the key to your health, diet, and what you put into your body. And just knowing that that is the, the truth, because I've experienced it now for eight years, I've experienced the change in my health, my family's health, my mental health, um, all of that. <laughs> um, so you guys are on a big adventure, and something we didn't talk about earlier mm -hmm. is why are we cleaning up your farm? Well, because we're shutting it down because we're moving. So it's uh, I'm really excited actually. We're gonna be going to Tennessee to buy our dream land and, and homestead and all of that. So that's kind of the next part of the journey is how do I take a backyard farm, take it out to the country and you know build a much bigger, really cool property. So I'm excited to show everybody what's next. So tell us like, what do you envision? What's your ideal situation out there? So we're looking for like five to 10 acres, you know, somewhere about like 30 to 50 minutes outside of a major city. Now for the land I want, a little bit of flat, a little bit of everything, like a little bit of flat, a little bit of hills, a little bit of forest in the back maybe. A stream or a pond would be incredible. If you don't have one, maybe I'll build a pond, but. Um, <laughs> it's possible. Yeah, so Tennessee's cool because you know we get 50 inches of rain out there, so it's like you don't have to irrigate, and there's, there's gonna be a lot of fun things. But it'll be more difficult growing. Yeah. There's a lot of bugs. There's, the weather's more difficult, so. Different obstacles, but oh, this yeah. is something you guys have waited for for a long time. Yeah, very long time. This is something you've looked forward to for over a decade, would Pro you say? Yeah, close to that, probably. Yeah, I've been well, dreaming of having my own land and. And getting to develop whatever I want and doing, you know, a crazy big, very diverse, complex system. So I'm excited That's to combine exciting. trees and perennials and annuals all together. And do it's going to be really awesome. Fun. So if you guys know of any cool places out there in Tennessee, you got to <laughs> let us know. You guys, thank you so much for joining me tonight. It has been so good to be with you. I know that I'm sitting at my computer so happy to be with you guys. I'm really excited for 2020. I'm on this mission to help as many people say yes to their dreams, say no to the limiting beliefs, and get started growing big in their small space. If you guys enjoyed this video and it added value to your life and you know other people who might be interested in watching content like this, then I would ask that you join me in this mission and helping as many people as possible uh, and share this video, share it with your friends, with your family, post it on Facebook, send it to a friend in a text message because when you share my videos, YouTube goes, oh, oh, people like this content great we shall push it along to more people and so uh thank you in advance for sharing some of these videos as i know you guys do thanks for joining with me in this mission to help as many people get growing big in their small space and i'm really looking forward to this year i'm super excited for 2020 i'm really excited uh, for this video series and bringing you guys as much content uh, that is inspirational encouraging and empowering you to get started growing big in your small space I feel like I've said that 20 times, but that's literally the vision for 2020 is like, how many people can I help inspire, empower, and equip to do this thing already? Like everybody, everybody can garden. Everybody can garden. I think we just get caught up and we tell ourselves these lies, like we can't, or you know, my, my dreams of a garden or my dreams of a farm don't matter. And I'm here to tell you absolutely not. Like your dream of a garden or a farm or whatever it may be, I 100% believe that it's there for a reason. And I have seen amazing things happen in my life from saying yes to my dreams. I have gotten to travel the country. I've met so many other like-minded people and I'm just, I'm 100% convinced that we all have dreams in our hearts for a reason. And so I wanna help other people 
uh, come alive to those dreams. And so thank you in advance for partnering with me in that. And I really hope that this video blessed you. If you want to continue the party, join me over on the live stream where I'll be hanging out with you guys for a little bit to say hi, cause I missed you guys. And if you're catching this on the replay, I'm sorry you missed the live stream, but you can catch my videos every Friday and I might pop in on Tuesdays for like a two minute Tuesday. We'll see. We shall see, but for sure every Friday. So thanks again for joining me today, you guys. I hope to see you live on the live stream. And if not, I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Hi. Oh my goodness, did you get some grass? <laughs> I should be the last to know all in this I stand alone Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know